Hi, it's Tim Altman here, respiratory therapist and naturopath. Today I'm going to answer a question that often gets asked to me by clients who I'm teaching how to breathe properly or from the general public, and that is how do I breathe using my diaphragm? We often hear that the diaphragm is the muscle we should use to breathe mostly, and that is true. It is actually technically what we call the primary breathing muscle. It's the muscle that the nervous system sends signals to to instigate inhalation or to switch off inhalation and allow our diaphragm to then recoil on exhalation. So it's the primary or most important breathing muscle. And learning how to use your diaphragm is important, important because most people actually don't use their diaphragm when they're breathing. We actually use our chest and shoulders. And, and that's unfortunately, it's a bad habit we've learned and, and it's not anywhere near as functional. Our chest and shoulders are what we might call our secondary muscles. So they're the muscles for inhalation that we use in a case of emergency. So if someone startles you, you go <gasps> big in breath using our chest and shoulders and our mouth and that kicks us into emergency mode or we get ready for fight or flight. So that's the function of bringing in secondary or emergency muscles. Another example is of an emergency is what we might call a cardiovascular emergency is where I'm exercising at a high level. Then I have to learn, I have to use, my body's using more energy, so therefore I've got to use my chest and shoulders to make more energy. So I've got to breathe harder to get more oxygen into my cells for energy production. So I then would use my diaphragm and my chest. So, so that's how I would breathe. However, what we unfortunately what happens is that most people breathe with our chest and shoulders only even when we're at rest and at rest it should be our diaphragm only not our chest and shoulders so basically in order to learn how to use our diaphragm it's what we have to learn is how does it work some people say i can't feel my diaphragm move when i'm breathing what do i do how do i learn to use my diaphragm and the answer to that question is well nor can I generally. However, I know I can feel the consequence of my diaphragm moving. And that, what that means is our diaphragm is a muscle that separates our chest from our abdominal cavity. And it's shaped like a parachute, like this. And when we, can, when we inhale, it contracts downwards like that. And when we exhale, and it basically downwards like that, drawing the bottom of your lungs downwards and the volume increases in your lungs so air travels in. So it contracts downwards and then when we finish exhaling, then it will, it will recoil back upwards. And that's the exhale. So the exhale, there's no muscular movement. The muscular movement is on the inhale and the exhale is a recoil. Now, our abdominal cavity is a, a cavity that has no obvious holes or escape valves for air. So air can escape from our mouth or come in and out through our mouth or our nostrils. But in the abdominal cavity, that's not the option. So if I push down, if you imagine it like a liquid-filled balloon, obviously, there's no air in the balloon apart from the air that's already in there. So if I were to push down on a liquid-filled balloon, it will expand. And then if I were to stop pushing down, it will then recoil. And that's exactly the same as how you would use your diaphragm when you're breathing. If you imagine your belly, so if I stand up, and you can see my belly here as I breathe in, and I put my hand on my belly, my hand will expand outward. So it's just breathe in, or you can put your fingers here. And as I breathe in, they separate. And as I exhale, they come back together. Ex ex they move outwards, come back together. Remembering we're not using chest and shoulders at all. It's all diaphragm. And if you, once you get used to doing it that way, you can actually put one hand on the lower back and one hand behind your back on, say, on your kidneys and one hand on your belly and feel your abdomen expand both forwards and backwards because it really should expand in all directions. So you can practice that exercise. Standing is probably the hardest. Easiest is lying down, sitting in between. And if you are sitting, you can put a hand behind the back, on the, around the back of the chair and one on your belly and you'll feel... And, you'll, you know, and then that will help. Or if you're sitting, one of the reasons we put our hand behind our back is to, to, to so our shoulders come back and therefore we're not slumped in the seat. And it makes it very, very hard to use our diaphragm if we're slumped. So if we put our hands behind or our arms behind the, the, the back of the chair, 
our shoulders are more, or our body's more upright and it's easier to diaphragm breathe. So that's how to learn how to use your diaphragm by learning how to use your abdomen, what we might call belly breathing. So if you want to learn how to diaphragm breathe, learn how to belly breathe. And it does make it far more efficient. It actually helps us learn how to regulate our nervous system because our diaphragm of all the automatic functions in our body is the only, breathing is the only one we can consciously control. And the same nervous system that regulates the automatic functions is the same nervous system that regulates the stress response. So if I can learn to regulate my diaphragm breathing, then I can actually regulate the phase of my nervous system, the phases of my nervous system. And, and basically, the inhalation will activate the phase of the nervous system that has you in, in fight or flight. And the exhale is the, the phase that will have you in relaxation. And exhale, according to diagnostic norms, our exhales should be slightly longer than our inhale. So that makes us more relaxed. However, most people don't breathe that way. We use our chest and shoulders. So if I'm doing this, breathing using my chest and shoulders, I can't control exhalation, and I actually become what we call slightly sympathetic dominant or slightly in fight or flight, and we don't want to be that way. So by learning how to diaphragm breathe, we can actually create diaphragmatic breathing rhythms that can increase the, what we call the parasympathetic or the relaxation phase of breathing. Plus, learning to use your diaphragm will actually then help you use your full lung volume for gas exchange. So your, when your diaphragm contacts drown, it draws the bottom of the lungs downwards and you get more air. Tra you get air travel into your lungs, but you actually get air travel into the whole lung. Whereas if I use my chest and shoulders, it's only likely to get into the upper half of the lungs. So that, once again, makes you more efficient. And the third thing is it actually helps to slow down the rate of breathing. And, the rate, and if you slow down the rate of breathing, it'll actually mean that you deliver oxygen far more efficiently to the cells for energy production. So you get more energy. So if you learn how to diaphragm breathe, it can be fantastic for your health in a number of ways. If you'd like to learn to, how to diaphragm breathe, um, or if you'd like to be taught in more detail, then I can teach you either via clinic, in, in my clinic one-on-one -on -one or with groups or via Skype. Just contact me, tim at timaltman.com.au or jump on my website, www.timaltman.com.au or feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Tim Altman. Thank you.